we've got Kelly Duplicy And please This is an English Kelly So don't send us messages How come you're not from Afrikaans It's because an English Duplicy They just uh, Duplicy Yeah, yeah. But she They really to, don't she, sometimes Kelly They really I promise you We explain to people This is an English Duplicy And then someone will still send a message <laughs> Why can't this person speak Afrikaans a She's only married to an Afrikaans person That's Isn't right. it? I remember from last time That's good yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we're going to talk about rare diseases um, and especially the medical funds, not covering some of them. But it's also uh, other medical data that Henry can say. Yeah, so just maybe to get, get some context. So uh, the end of Feb, we had a rare disease day, that, which took place at the end of Feb, now on Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And then also today, which makes it actually more relevant, relevant thank mm. you, uh, is World Birth Defects Day. Um, and I think with both of these topics, we have a bit of challenges. So will you ask for your name? Yeah. No, you can also. Can I, can I go? So uh, this is Annie Rede, who is here today for the day. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. I think um, let's start at the beginning. I think the, the whole idea of this interview is also to raise awareness because people think, you know, it's a rare disease until you get that rare disease or until you have someone who um, has been diagnosed with a rare disease such as that. So what can we actually do to raise awareness? So I think importantly is the community having an understanding. So if you look around you, if, without a doubt, everyone will know someone that has a rare disease. You just might not know that they have it. Mm. You will know that person, but they because might. Because it's rare. Because it's rare, and a lot of them are invisible. Mm. So you look at them, they look completely healthy. These are the people that you see coming often out of the disability parkings that you're like, well, that person's not in a wheelchair. But actually, they're also oxygen dependent, and they're bracing the shops without their oxygen canister, and that's why they're parking in the disability parking. Just have your sticker with you. Yes. Otherwise, people are going to judge you Have your sticker with you <laughs> and hold it up proud mm, because you yes. do, they get lambasted. Yeah. But, you know, it's having an understanding of these people in the community. And sometimes it is very obvious that there's a problem. Other times, not so much. And I think that is critical. That is the reason we, we try to push awareness is because if people are aware, A, they'll get a diagnosis quicker. Mm. B, they they, they're quicker to identify their symptoms and they're not fearful of going to a doctor and saying, listen, this is what's happening. Mm. You know, I'm concerned about X, Y, and Z. When you're terrified because you're worried about how society is going to treat you, um, it just delays the entire process. So awareness and community support is vital. Mm. Yeah. How do they usually go about in identifying or um diagnosing rare diseases because i mean you may may feel certain symptoms but it's rare so it's not necessarily um pinpointed so so how do they actually go about in identifying this so there's obviously lots of diagnostic possibilities in children generally the conditions are exceptionally severe Is it? Um, and they are noticeable from birth or early on after birth so in the adults, um, it's very, very slowly progressing conditions, and often they mimic a lot of common symptoms. Mm. So, for instance, you can have joint pain, you can have headaches, etc. They'll say, oh, you may be developing arthritis, that sort of thing, and actually you're developing some autoimmune condition mm. underneath mm. there. So as adults, it's actually a lot more challenging to get a diagnosis than it is for children because their conditions are generally very progressive and a lot more severe. Mm. Mm. I see someone says, Henry is... Is uh, speaking Oxford English Oxford. this morning. Very well done. <laughs> Compliment. So Thanks. I'm going to ask a question as well. <laughs> in, 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 what is it? Standard South African yeah, Standard English. South African. There's 7,000 rare diseases. <laughs> um, but I realised yesterday there's 7,001 because Shabir Shaikh's got his own one. No, I'm yes. joking. Someone <laughs> says, what is okay. he's got? Maybe it is a rare disease. <laughs> no, we had his brother yesterday and it was a big story. Um, but it was a real disease, as Barry said. It's a very, it very hectic uh, it's uh, not easily, form of yeah. uh, bl blood pressure. High blood pressure. But 7,000 great diseases. It's, it's like, for me, it feels like a... a what's that in the high stick? In the high stick? Severe? High stick. It's a high... No, the needle uh, in the yeah. haystack. That's right, the yeah. needle Owens. Wow. Uh, a, na a nail yeah. in the honey. Yeah, but the. Honey, <laughs> 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 but <laughs> how difficult is it to. to I mean, it, it must be extremely difficult if your child is born, let's say, as a baby with mm. a rare disease. Yeah, so it is. It's, it's exceptionally difficult. Mm. Um, particularly in South Africa, where our diagnostic facilities are, are not 
um, great. Um, our you know South African laboratories are overburdened already, mm. um, so there's a long waiting period, and we don't have a lot of the up to date technology to. Uh, test the vast array of things. So a lot of these tests need to be done overseas and that's an expense that medical aids won't cover. Mm. And it is also, it's not something that the state covers either. So unless you can fork out 10 to 15, sometimes up to 50,000 rand to actually send these tests overseas to get them done, you go without a diagnosis. Mm. And the challenge there is without a confirmation of diagnosis, medical aids won't implement treatment. Sure. So, and if it's a rare diagnosis, then... Mm. So, obviously. yeah. So, and then it's a rare diagnosis and it's, it's expensive. So then... So it's this, it's this challenge, you know. Mm. You know, Do you, A, if you've got... If you're a family and you know that something's really severe and you've only got a couple of months left, do you spend the 50,000 rand trying to get a name for that condition or do you invest in memories? Mm. And that's, that that's the reality. We're going to say that this is the reality. Iemand's a little daughter, seven years old, is angel man syndrome, diagnosed. I'm going to go to a prol specialist. The medical fund will not be paid for it. And one out of 15,000 people will get it. So it's a absolute problem. Uh, ons gesels verder met Akeri Duplessis van Rare Diseases uh, South Africa. Um, Akeri, thank you so much for joining us once again. I think it's it's something that we really need to focus on. Um, one of the quotes, and I don't know if it's if it's your quote or if it's Rare Disease South Africa's quote, but this really struck me. Uh, rare isn't scarce. Rare isn't infrequent and rare isn't remote. In fact, rare is not as rare as you think. Wow, can you elaborate on that? That's exactly correct. So individually, these conditions might be very rare. So to meet two people in a lifetime with the same condition is unlikely. Mm. But when you put us collectively in a group of rare diseases, as, as like you would a group of cancer, it's a cancer patient as opposed to definitively which cancer it is. If you mm -hmm. put us all together as rare disease patients, we should be 3.7 <coughs> million South Africans. 3.7 million South Africans, yeah. and we're still That's sitting not rare here. At all. Yes, <laughs> and we're still sitting here arguing with our governments and our medical aides as to why we should be in given funding, why we should be given an opportunity to live, like any other group of patients in this country. 3.7 million people is a significant burden on the healthcare system. And I just don't understand it because at the end of the day, it's an illness. It's a you you there's you something pay wrong. For it. You pay for it. But you know, I really don't understand it. So why why don't they pay for it? That's a weird medical. Uh, it's so a burden, a medical burden. It is. But it's just one. <laughs> let's say it's one person, or, or I mean, just normal illnesses or getting cancer. Isn't that a bigger burden? I don't know. Yes. So What's so the, the chances of finding a treatment for a rare condition is slim. Only five percent of all rare conditions have a treatment available. Mm. So already that narrows down the margins that you're going to have a patient in front of you that's a paid for patient. So really, if you look across our healthcare budget, it would be less than 0.01% if we treated all the rare disease patients that we have out of our national health budget. I mean, really, that's a minimal impact. Mm. But because of the fact that the conditions are so expensive to treat, because it's really intricate science, I mean, they are making alterations to gene editing. They are, mm -hmm. you know, it's really, really complicated stuff. And if you look at the cost of that, they're going, oh, we can't pay 500,000 rand for one patient. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Is it like but once of or a month? So, so most of them are lifelong treatments, so no. they're, they're not curative. But if you look, say someone with diabetes, they start medication, they go from being 80% functional to 87% functional. These rare disease patients, these treatments take them from being on death's doorstep to living. Hmm. The, the, the value that so you get for these change. treatments, it's... It's life-changing stuff. Wat ontstellend is, nee, is, ek het gister gehoor van iemand um, by een kardioloog, waar die mense een, een hartkonditie het wat baie skaars is. Nee. <laughs> en wat ontstellend is, is to sê hulle, die ouwens het teruggekom, daar is medikasie beskikbaar, 80.000 rand a maand, maar die sure. mense wonder of twyfel of die medische fonds iets daarvan gaan betaal. Nou, wat is so'n persoonse kans dan nou om te oorleef? Um, mm. as hulle nie die medikasie gebruik nie, en wie gaan 80.000 rand hee om te betaal? Verstaan jy? So, but, you know, but, but, but that's maybe another question um, that we should ask. Why is uh, the medication so expensive? Would you say that it's actually, the problem is that there's not enough research being done? Because then that's maybe something else that we need to push. So it's always, generally speaking, it's new research. This is a new treatment modality. It's groundbreaking yeah. stuff. 
So you understand it's a lot of money. So it's a lot of money yeah. and there's lots of failed attempts before you get it right. So you've got to pay for all the failed attempts as well, as in any business, to, till you get the right model. Yeah. Then you've got to think that if you're treating something like asthma, so you bring a new molecule, might be great, but you've got thousands and millions of patients around the world to reclaim those costs from. In the rare disease population, you've got maybe a thousand patients in the globe on the globe mm, mm. and so you've got to base your pricing to recuperate that research and development cost okay. over a very few patients and over half the patent time so rare disease patents are only eight years whereas a normal drug patent's 15. yeah kelly but how do you as rare disease south africa then assist these patients or these people so, if, if the medical aid does not pay for it so the car the cardiology patient that you were referring to yesterday mm. hopefully they will find us within the next week we will then submit motivations to their various medical aids. We'll get the evidence-based argument that's required. And when push comes to shove, after that initial discussion with the scheme, if we need to, we take legal action. We take them to counsel. Mm. Because it is not fair to say to someone, I'm sorry, you landed on the wrong side of the social yeah. economic lottery this time. Yeah. Mm. You just not, we're just not going to help you. It's discrimination, actually. It's actually mm. discrimination. Mm. It's disease-based discrimination and it cannot continue. Wow. It just feels like we as South Africans, and it's maybe just me, us maak a mok vir die verkeerde goed. En die goed wat eindelijk saak maak, you know, we don't want to lift our butts off but, the seat. Mm. But speaking of South Africa, is this a case around the world? Is this how rare disease, disease patients are treated around the world? So um, it has got better in is developed it? countries. In low and middle income countries, this is the fight that we're still fighting. Mm. And bearing in mind in Africa, we deal with a lot of, um, you know, malaria, HIV, TB. Those are disease burdens that many other continents don't battle with. So we understand that we're at a disadvantage there. But that doesn't mean that you progressive realization, which is in, enshrined in our constitution, mm. means that you've still got to do something. You cannot... You cannot use the fact that the country is developing as a reason to not do anything. Mm. Mm. Let's quickly talk about Rare Disease Day, which was now um, end of, of February. Uh, what did you guys do um, on that day? I see that the, the theme was Reframe Rare, and it actually links so, so good with, with what we just said, that quote that I've given. Exactly. So uh, what was your initial plan? Um, what, what were you hoping on? achieving on that so day. we had we had a whole for fact sake um a social media campaign where we highlighted <laughs> that exactly so these. That's very, <laughs> i almost tried to listen a second time now when you said <laughs> that we um i tried to announce it yes, very well yes. <laughs> but we had a whole social media campaign where we got patients to actually restate the fact so that people knew hang on, it's not so rare. That it, chances are it might actually be someone I love tomorrow. Yeah. So that was the whole thing about reframing rare and changing it okay. from this negative and pity to actually we positive patients, we strong patients, we fighters. Just help like us. Like we, 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 we're going to pick up our tools and we're going to go to war if we have mm. to. Like mm. we're not, you know, sick and dying and that's where we're going to leave it. We've always said that when a doctor says to a rare disease patient, you know, go home and be comfortable. They see it as a challenge. They're like, mm. I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's what sure. they do. And sure. then we also had our denim walk. And our denim walk was just an opportunity to bring all of our community together. And it was a neon walk at night at the Walter Sisulu Botanical Gardens. And you see these little kids come out in their electric wheelchairs and they've neoned them out and they put mm. lights underneath. And it's so lacquer. You see mm. a child that sees another child that's like them. Mm. And that instant connection that they have is just too heartwarming. Mm. Yeah, I, I remember Madeleine de Vett. She sent us a picture. She was here at, like two years ago with her daughter. Um, and she just sent us a picture to say wow. how she looked two years afterwards, you know. And you know them quite well. Wow. Yeah, she's doing so well. I mean, she's... But what are the hopes for patients in South Africa? The hopes are the hopes are that we've got to rally together. If we rally together as a community, as rare disease patients and as civil society, our hopes are good. Universal healthcare, which is the very premise that NHI is supposedly based on, grants us treatment. Universal healthcare includes provision for rare diseases. So yeah. if universal healthcare proceeds, we'll do well. But we need a fight to make sure that we are not left behind. <coughs> mm. And we are the easy population to leave behind because no one shouts about it. Yeah. It's rare. It's never going to bother us. Mm. Doctors will say to you, I'm never going to see a rare patient. I shouldn't get educated on it. 
medical aides will say, oh, we'll, we don't include cover for that because it'll never happen. Well, mm. it does. I'm proof, my son is proof that it does happen. Yeah. And I'm just not prepared to stand back and let people die while we decide who, who gets yes. treatments and who doesn't. You see, we should encourage listeners and viewers to say, listen, let's stand together. Um, and if you're fighting this fight alone at the moment, with a, maybe with a fa family member who's got a rare disease, please contact uh, Kelly. Should Absolutely. We? Let's fight it together. Mm. Let's make sure that we take as many of them, as many medical aids, as many funders, as many hospitals. Let's raise awareness about it. Let's make sure that we get their names out there and that people know exactly what their rights are. Yeah. And let's have them reaffirmed all the time. If mm. we have to go to court on a monthly basis to have another thing oh. reaffirmed, that's what you must do. Are, are you so. are you fund based in in or do you have like lawyers that helps you pro rata or say we committed? But or if there's someone listening now and he's a big shot attorney and say, listen, I'm going to do it, make a difference. I'm going to help you guys. Are you always looking for people like that? Always, we're always okay. looking for people like that. The problem is the big law firms are generally have a conflict of interest because they've represented a medical scheme at some exactly. point. Sure. So I went up on my own against Nelson Mandela's advocate last year. Me against Nelson Mandela's advocate. Jokes aside. It's a feisty one, this <laughs> one. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, sure. Luckily, wow. you're, you're a good talker. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Owens. Motivated, say something. Near the butt food, the other side. Can I for Kelly off your spine? Yeah. Mm. And the way wow. we ended that, Kelly. someone just said to us, Can you listen, please, Oppo, over my car, praat? I don't want to be honest, but it looks like you're in the back of the oh, That's how we feel. But so, but, 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 Kelly, we, uh, uh, I think we really want to salute you. You and the whole team of Rare Disease South Africa for what you guys are doing. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's, it's one of those conversations that we need to have again and have again until we see the victory, uh, because that's at the end the only way that we will see that. So thank you so much. We salute you. Thanks for your time. Thank you for thank having you, me. Kelly.